Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. Why are central banks going crazy over gold? That's going to be something we're going to explore in this video. We're going to take a look and see what they've been doing uh, for a while and how what they're doing provides for a great example of what we should be doing. They're snapping up the metal at the fastest rate in almost a half a century in a trend that looks set to continue. Over the past year, they've purchased about 715.7 metric tons of gold bullion worth about $29.4 billion, according to a recently published report from the World Gold Council. In all likelihood, they expect it to be strong for another year, says Alastair Hewitt, who is a director of intelligence at the World Gold Council in London. And this is all according to an article here from thestreet.com. He notes that the volume of gold purchased by such institutions over the most recent four quarters was higher than any calendar year since 1971. That was when President Richard Nixon pulled the U.S. off the gold standard monetary system at a time when gold was worth $35 a troy ounce. Gold was recently fetching around $1,278 an ounce as of the recording of this video. It's actually pushed up a little bit higher than that, which is down from the year's high of $1,341 an ounce, reached on February the 19th. Uh, the likely continued buying of the metal should help lift gold mining stocks, such as those held by Van Eck Vectors Gold Miners, which is an ETF that holds a basket of gold mining shares that tend to benefit uh, when the price of the metal rallies. But it's sort of a speculative uh, uh, buy there. But it does show that demand is increasing, especially from these central banks. And since they're an emerging market country such as Russia, they're driving the push to buy more gold and diversify away from holding U.S. dollars. And I think that's the key reason from holding that maybe they sense there's a little bit of trouble that could be coming for the dollar. And a reset, which is likely to happen sometime, and some four will revalue everything, including gold. Um, so they started... Uh, snapping up more of the metal in earnest just after the financial crisis of 2008 and 2009, which would reverse the trend of ditching the metal. And they kind of saw the writing on the wall because really during that crisis, uh, we really averted a, a disaster. Um, it could have been much worse, um, but nonetheless, probably something else is going to happen that's going to be on par with or could be worse. It may not be uh, based off of some of what has been done since the last recession ended. But there's other things that have not been done or continuing in the same path, such as the printing of current money and uh, increasing the debt, deficit spending and the like. So this is part of a trend that began, began so as long as ago as 2010, since says George Milling Stanley, which is the head of the gold strategy of Boston-based asset management company State Street Global Advisor. That was when central banks switched, uh, switched over from sales to net purchases. In 2018, central banks purchased 657 tons of bullion, up from mere 79 tons in 2010, according to the World Gold Council report. Milling Stanley says that many countries in the developing world feel that they have far too many U.S. dollars in their reserves and they want to diversify by increasing their holdings of bullion. And you know what that means. If they have a lot of dollars in their reserves and they want to get rid of those for bullion, well, that means they're going to have an influx of dollars in the market. What's that going to do when we're flushed with cash around the world? This buying is going to continue, according to the emergency market central banks uh, that uh, he talks to. Uh, so another WGC report shows that central bank holdings in the developing world are far smaller than in much of the developed world, which is no surprise. For instance, three-fourths of the U.S. reserves are held in gold, while Germany holds seven-tenths of its reserves in bullion, WGC data show. 
Compare that to Russia, the biggest central bank buyer of the metal in the first quarter of the year, where gold amounted to 18.5% of the country's reserves. The figures for China and India are 2.5% and 6.3%, respectively. Uh, they, can t- they certainly want more gold across the board in, emer- in emerging markets, says a Milling Stanley. Better than just buying the metal, he says that the government banks aren't sensitive about prices. They will buy whether the price is high or low, at least once they've decided to accumulate more bullion for their country. They make the decision and they stick with it. And really, in a sense, that's kind of what we should be doing too. So that is kind of one lesson that we can learn from the central banks buying gold. If the demand for gold from central banks continues, that should be good for the gold market because it all but guarantees that a significant portion of the annual supply of the metal will be taken off, off the market each year. The 657 tons purchased by national central banks and similar institutions, such as the IMF, last year accounted for 14% of 2018's total supply of gold, which comes mainly from mines and metal that gets recycled from used electronics and jewelry. So that's interesting how that is coming from. Um, mines and metal that gets recycled. This year's central bank buying demand could be just as good, if not better than it was in 2018. By the look of the figures that they could repeat that or even surpass it this year, says Milling Stanley, that is a very welcome development for the gold market as a whole. And, you know, when you have these uh, central banks that are wanting to increase the holdings of this precious metal, um, you know, when price is not so much a factor, my guess is if we were to see the price go up, this is one area where, uh, you know, it may not be as advised because usually we say to buy low and sell high, but uh, they're going to buy on the way up and they're going to buy on the, on the way down, but especially on the way up. And uh, my guess is probably that's going to be um, one of the biggest um, things that w- could see where we could see the price spike up. If central banks start to see the price go up and demand increase from r- regular buyers of the metal, uh, you know, sort of a fear of missing out type of situation if gold were to climb, the central bankers may amp up their purchasing, not so much because of the price, but because they want the supply. And they want the supply um, before you and I can get it. So I would suggest people pick up gold um, as a diversification tool in their portfolios. As little as you can afford or as much as you can afford. And to be able to hedge yourself and protect yourself as the ultimate protection, the ultimate insurance against economic instability. Because this metal... Gold has been used as money for thousands of years, about 4,000 years or so. And it's an amazing, it's an amazing metal indeed. It is, um, it is the most least reactive of the metals out there. And uh, it's something that central banks are taking notice of in the last couple of years here. And I believe that we in this community can empower ourselves by becoming essentially our own central bank. And the more of this that we have, the more empowered we are um, so that if there were a time of economic crisis or not, maybe not even economic crisis, because if everything is planned with a dollar reset or revaluation of the currency, then, you know, more than likely this metal is going to be um, is it's going to be revealed and it will break out of what its price point is now to be priced at based off its valuation, especially if gold is used as a backing for uh, the new dollar as part of a rules-based monetary system, um, and digital or otherwise. If, if there's something finite out there, and what better thing to choose than gold as a way to protect yourself and as a way to keep uh, confidence in your currency um, to use real money to back it. You know, use money to back your currency, and that's what gold is about. That's what the central banks know, 
and uh, that's what that's um, it's the ultimate reserve currency. Central banks have been accumulating it for years and years in the modern era, and um, and many more are accumulating more of it. And so, therefore, I believe that is a good enough reason for us to continue to acquire gold um, um, above and beyond silver. And that's why the diversification, that's why I really don't even worry about the ratio between gold to silver. Silver does seem to be a good value, uh, uh, certainly compare in that manner. But my view is, is even if the ratio is high, it's good to accumulate some gold as the ultimate stable safe haven and uh, protection against economic instability. So there you have it. Post your thoughts below. Um, and um, do you hold gold in any uh, amount, uh, whether it be a tenth of an ounce, a quarter of an ounce, or, or half ounce, or one ounce of gold? And do you have a goal of gold that you want to get? Or... Or you have the mind that you don't need to yet, um, and there's still time, and and you're fine accumulating silver, and is it something that you would consider in the future, or is it something you're just not worried about? Let me know your thoughts below. I would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for watching, and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.